Hello, Life Church kids. Welcome to another Children's Church session online. We are still having our services online because we're all being set apart. We're all being, uh, how do we say that, uh, socially whatever, distanced, socially distanced. But you can join us here online for the next few weeks. We will continue to have our lessons online. We have a great Facebook page called Life Church Kids. You can look at Life Church Kids. If it's a private group. If you want to be added, please go ahead and contact either Donna Pratt, Karen Corbin, Faith Hedesheimer, or myself, David Hedesheimer, and we'll get you added to the Life Church Kids page. Before we get started this morning, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer that the Lord will bless this time. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to worship you in lesson, to worship you in, in learning the word. And Lord, as we have this time together, that you would bless and that you would teach us, that you would hide your word in our hearts, that we might learn about you, that we might get to know you better. And we thank you for all things, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our lesson today is about Joshua and Caleb. Now, Joshua and Caleb, they were two of the helpers for Moses. Now, do you remember Moses when he was leading the children of Israel out of Egypt? And so uh, let me just put Caleb and Joshua. <clears throat> now, Moses was leading the children of Israel. And Joshua was one of his helpers. And it, it was a long struggle. They came out of Egypt. And the Lord parted the Red Sea for them. And then they got out in the desert. And they were out in the wilderness. And they didn't know if they were going to have food or anything to drink. And they complained to Moses. And God provided for them. And finally, after a while, and they had to fight some enemies. And after a while, they came to the promised land. That was the land that God had promised to them. It was the land of Canaan. God said, that is, that is the land that I am going to give you. And they finally came around to the, the, to the outskirts of the land of Canaan. And Moses chose 12 men. 12 men, one from each of the tribes of Israel. How many tribes were there? 12 tribes. There were 12 tribes. So he chose one man from each of the 12 tribes. And they were spies. And he said to the spies, he said, I want you to go in. Go into the land of Canaan. And I want you to spy out the land. And I want you to see whether the land is a good land or a bad land. I want you to tell me what kind of people live there. Uh, are, they, are they strong people? Are they weak what kind of cities do they live in? Are they, are they walled cities with big walls? Or do they just live in tents? Tell me all these things and bring back a report. And so the 12 men went into the land of Canaan. And they were there for 40 days. For 40 days. And they traveled throughout the land. And they saw the people that lived there. And they saw the cities that lived there. And they... They grabbed some of, the, some of the fruit that was there, some of the crops that were there. They said that they grabbed, they grabbed grapes. Now, who likes grapes? Who likes grapes? Do you guys like grapes? There were some, you know, when you, when you eat grapes, they're little things like this, right? They're kind of small. You just pop one in your mouth. The grapes that they had were so big, it took two men to carry a bunch of grapes. They had, to, they had to tie the bunch of grapes to a stick and carry it between two men. It was so big. And so they came back and they said to Moses, oh, the land is good. The land is good. It, it's a land flowing with milk and honey, which means that there's a lot of good stuff there. The soil is very good for growing crops, and it's a good land. But... And you see, whenever, somebody's, whenever somebody tells you that, whatever it is that they tell you, 
And then they say, but uh, you can just, you can forget about everything they just said because this, whatever they're going to say after the word but, that's what they really want to tell you. And so they said to Moses, yes, the land is a beautiful land. It's flowing with milk and honey, but the people there are huge. They're strong. They're mighty. They have the best weapons. And we saw giants in the land. We saw giants. They were huge. And we felt like grasshoppers. We were little. And they were so big. We felt like little grasshoppers. Yes. Come here. Come here, Nathaniel. You see, they felt like they felt like they were Nathaniel. And the giants were Big Dave here. Do I look big to you? Mm-hmm. But it doesn't matter, did it? That's right. And they said, the cities are walled and they're strong and, and they've got the best weapons. And all of these, yes, the land is good, but all of these things, the people, the land, it's a land that eats up its inhabitants, they said. I don't know if we can do this. I don't know if we can do this. And you see, there were, of the 12 men, the 12 spies, 10 came back. They said, no, we can't do this. Yes, it's a land flowing with milk and honey, but they're huge. They're huge. We can't, we can't do this. We're going to die. We're going to die. And then Caleb and Joshua stood up. And they had a different report. They said, yes, the land is tough. Yes, the people are huge. Yes, the cities are strong. Here's that word again. But God is with us. You see, you can forget about everything they said before. Yes, the land is tough. Yes, the people are huge. Yes, the cities are strong. But God is with us. And we are more than able to take the land. We're more than able to do this because God is with us. You see, it doesn't matter how big your problems are. It doesn't matter how big the obstacles are. It doesn't matter how big the giants are. It doesn't matter because God is with got a giant, God's bigger. You got strong cities, God's stronger. You got problems, God is bigger than your problems. Come here, come here Nathaniel again. You see, if this is, this is like us, and this is like our, pro, our giants, but God is with you, right? So, <laughs> because God is with us. Because God is with us.
It doesn't matter how big you are. What matters is how big your God is. That's what matters is how big your God is. See, God gave Caleb and Joshua a different heart. They understood it doesn't matter how big your problems are. And it doesn't matter how small you are. What matters is that the God that lives inside of you is bigger. He's bigger than the biggest giant. He's bigger than the biggest problem. God is with us. They understood that. And they said, Caleb stood up and he said, let's go. Let's go now. We can do this. God is with us. Well, now wait a minute. I've got 10 people that say no. And I got two people that say yes. Who are you going to believe? Now, most people say, well, you know what? There's 10 people that are saying no. 10 people are in agreement that this is a bad idea. There's only two people that say yes. What's four? 10 or two? 10. 10. 10 10's more, right? So should we do what the majority of the people want to do? No. Should we do what most of the people want to do? Not always. Not always. You see, just because the numbers are saying one thing, and the smaller numbers are saying the other thing, it doesn't mean you go with the bigger numbers. It doesn't matter who's more popular. It doesn't matter what everybody else is believing. You see, you're gonna find that, especially as you go into school, into your school, and you find out that people are saying, well, you don't have to listen to God. And there are gonna be more people that are gonna tell you, you don't have to obey God. And there are a few people that say, yes, obey God in everything. It's not the number of people that agree on one, one course of action. It's what does God say? What does God say? What is God saying? And you see, we have a saying that God and one makes a majority. God plus one person wins out. If God is with you, that's what you want to do. And so two people were saying, yes, God is with us. And they weren't afraid. You know what? We get into situations where, where they'll say, hey, you know what? Everybody believes this. Everybody believes this. You should believe it too because everybody else believes it. But that's not what we want to do. That's not what we want to uh to do it's whatever God says that's what we need to do it doesn't matter if everybody stands against me and says you cannot do this and God says do it guess what you need to do what God says to do you need to do what God says Caleb and Joshua understood that they understood that God is stronger God is more powerful. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the children of Israel, they decided to believe the ten. And they cried all night. All night long they cried. And they said to Moses, Moses, why didn't you just leave us in Egypt? We would have died there. It would have been better than dying out here. Or, Moses, why didn't we just die in the wilderness? We could have died there. We wouldn't have had to do this and go into battle. We're all going to die now. God's not interested. He's not interested in what we don't think we can do. God is interested in what he can do through you. That's what God is interested in. people didn't believe the people did not believe God they said we can't do this I they said we're gonna believe the ten that say no we can't do this and God was angry why 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 do you think God was angry 
because unbelief grieves God. God wants us to believe him. You know, when we don't believe God, it's the same as if we're calling God a liar. Would you call God a liar? No, not one of, the, not one of us would ever call God a liar. But when we don't believe God, that's exactly what we're doing. It's exactly as if we're calling God a liar. God never lies. God is a God, is a God of truth. And when God says go and take the land, you can do it because God said you can. But the people wouldn't believe. They wouldn't believe. And so finally, God said to Moses, I'm, I'm just going to destroy these people. They won't believe me. They won't listen to me. They won't, they won't do what I tell them to. They won't obey me. I'm just going to destroy them. And Moses, I will make a people out of you. And Moses said, oh, God, you can't do that. You see, if you do that, then what are the people going to say? They're going to say that, that this God, this God that he was so mighty that he brought the people out of Egypt. And yet, he couldn't bring them into the land. He couldn't finish the deal. That's what they would say about you, God, that you can't finish the deal. Please, God, please be patient with these people. Please forgive them their sins. And God said, I will not destroy them. I will not destroy them. However, yeah. They, want, they are afraid that they're going to die out here in the wilderness. I'll give them their wish. They will die in the wilderness. And they will, you will not go into the promised land until every one of you that is over the age of 20. Now, you guys are kids. You're safe. But everybody over the age of 20 is going to die in the wilderness except for two. Caleb and Joshua. Because Caleb and Joshua had a different spirit. Because Caleb and Joshua said, I believe. I believe God. And so God said, I'm not going to destroy them. They will enter the promised land, but nobody else. Nobody else will. And you know, for 40 years, for 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness. And for 40 years, until everybody died out, that was over the age of 20. Now think about that. How long is 40 years? Let's see. Lizzie, you're the oldest one here. 12 years old right now. If you were, if you were there when the spies went into the land and you were 12 years old, you would have been close to my age by the time you got to go into the promised land. You'd have become a full-grown adult. And maybe had kids and even grandkids by that time. You see, God does not want us to disobey him. And God is very insulted when we don't believe him. Because it's the same as when we say, if we were to say, God, you're a liar. God, you're lying to me. God never lies. And God doesn't want us to disbelieve him. But God wants to believe him. And God wants us to obey him. Caleb and Joshua did that. They obeyed. They said, yes. Yes. The land is strong. Yes. The people are strong. Yes. They're huge. But God is with us. We can do this because God is with us. That's what I want you to take with you. You see, when God tells you to do something, you can count on You can they say you can take it to the bank. It's a sure thing. If God is telling you to do it, he will make a way for you to do it. He's going to make a way. It doesn't matter what the odds are against you. It doesn't matter. You could be one person and be facing a thousand. But it doesn't matter. You see, because with God, one person could chase a thousand people away. And you'll see that over and over again in the Bible, where God will use the small and God will use the weak to defeat the large and the strong. Why? Because God wants to get the glory. And God will use you. Even you 
young people, even in your youth, God will use you to do great things because God gets the glory from it. Remember that God is with us if we obey him. If we obey him, God is with us. You see, what happened is, after Moses said, you know what, you're all going to die in the wilderness, and the people said, oh, we've sinned. Oh, we've sinned. We made a mistake. Okay, well, we'll do it. We'll do it. Okay, we're, we're going to do it. We're, we're going to get people together, and we're going to go into this land, and we're going to take it. We're, we can do this. We can do this now. And Moses said, no. Uh -uh. God's not with you anymore. Your time has passed. No, we can do this. We can do this. Let us take the ark of let's let's take the, let's take the ark of the covenant with us because that's the evidence that God is with us. Moses said the ark's not going anywhere. God's not with you. No, we can do this. We can do this. And they got they got a band of soldiers together and they decided to go into the land. Caleb and Joshua didn't go. They got they went into the land. And they went up against the people, and they got their bottoms kicked. They got beat so bad. And they ran back to the camp. We can't do this. Oh, we're going to die. We're going to die. Moses said, I told you not to go. God wasn't with you. Don't go. For 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness. Until finally, everybody that was over the age of 20 at that time, why 20? Because that's what they considered an adult back then. So everybody that knew better, over the age of 20, they all died in the wilderness, except for Caleb and Joshua. Caleb and Joshua pleased God because they had a different heart. If you have a different heart, if you will be the one to say, I believe God, if you will be the one to say that God is right and everybody else is wrong, you will please God. And God will be with you, and God will do mighty things through you. I want to encourage you today to be like Caleb and be like Joshua. I want to encourage you to believe God. When God says go, you go. When God says stay, you stay. But whatever God says, that's what you do. And if you will do that, and if you will obey God, God will be with you. If you obey him. And when God is with you, there's nothing that can stand against you. Nothing. Let's take some time and pray before the Lord. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you because you are with us when we obey you. And you do great and mighty things. There's nothing that you cannot do. And there's no one that can stand before you. And we know that when we are walking in your steps, when we're walking in your path, that the giants will fall before us. And there's nothing that can stop us from doing your will. Father, I pray that as, as those have listened to this video online, that they would take it to their hearts and that they would, that they would learn that God can be trusted that they would learn that God will always lead us into victory. Father, I pray that you bless those that are watching this, bless their day, bless their time together, and that you would uh, help them to come back when we open the doors here again, that you would lead them back in, that we might enjoy Children's Church together. And Father, we thank you and praise you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. And once again, I want to invite you. Yes, we cannot be together as a church right now because of this uh, sickness that's going around. But this will end. And we'll, be, we'll open the doors of the church again. And it, I'm hoping that it will be very soon. And I want to invite you to come back. I want to invite you to tell your parents, I need to go to children's church. And come on back. And we'll all rejoice together. Now, if you, again, if you haven't already been invited to... Uh, be members of the Life Church Kids Facebook page. You can contact Miss Donna. You can contact Miss Karen. You can contact Miss Faith. Or you can contact me, David. We're all on Facebook. And go ahead and just contact us and say, Hey, I want to be part of I want to be part of Life Church Kids, and we'll add you. 
there's going to be a whole bunch of things, and we're, we're really getting the page going now, and there's going to be a whole bunch of things together that, uh, that we're going to have for you. So join us on Life Church Kids. We'll also post this video online at our church page, and I invite you to come to the church page. There's lots to do, not only for you, but for your parents, too. And I want to thank you for listening, and thank you for sharing this time with us. May God bless you.